It's agony, ecstasy We're all one big family We've got each other's back We're the wolf pack We're the wolf pack Hey guys, this is Scott WWFC for the wolf pack giving my top 10 moms of the decade for Wolverhampton Wanderers I want to start off at number 10 talking about Mick McCarthy for me he was a great manager uh, for us and did a very good job for us um, he managed to get us back to the Premier League uh, establish us there for a couple of seasons and then at that last season um, obviously his tenure came to an end um, due to that horrible loss against West Brom Jalbion um, but if you look at what he did with what he had at the time, I think it was it was amazing. Um, also, the fact that if you look, he bought Doherty. He saw something did Doherty at the time, and he brought him into the team. And then you look at Doherty now, especially under Nuno's guidance, he's turned into one of our best players that we could ever have. So I think in this past decade, we can't ignore the fact of what Mick McCarthy accomplished for our club and what he did for us. And I'm still a big fan of McCarthy today. And yeah, for me, he would definitely make number 10. For number 9, it's got to be the takeover of Fusen. Um, for me, they've come in, uh, they've built a good structure within our club now about how they want to uh, work with our club, how they want to do their business and stuff like that. And they've come in and it took a few seasons to get there, but eventually they found the right manager in Nuno. And they've took us to places we could only ever dream of. Because if you think about it, when we was in League One, you would never have said to yourself, oh, we'll be in Europe in a few seasons' time. Don't worry about it. Sir Jack did a great job for our club, um, but limited again with what he, he, he could do. Steve Morgan came in. Um, to be honest, I wasn't a big fan of Steve Morgan. But he did what he could do. And then... Now we've got Fusen, and I feel like we're going to be with Fusen probably till I'm an old man, at least, um, because I honestly think they want to build us into a franchise as big as your Man United's, as big as your Liverpool's, as big as your Madrid's, your Barcelona's, and they want to build that. Obviously, it's going to take time and, and that, but the early signs of what we've seen already look amazing, and I can't wait for the future and see what they've got in store for us, because they've got big plans. Moving on to number eight, uh, for me, is the, that link with China with Fuzan as well. Um, to, to take a club of China, to show them off, because that's your club, you've bought them, and you want to show them off in China, and then to see how big a fan base we have in China, and then to go that one step further and beat Manchester City in the Asian Trophy final in front of our Chinese-based fans, and in front of the Chinese cameras, and in front of the world who that was watching as well. You've got to be pleased with how far we've come. We could never have imagined seeing anything like that before. And it's amazing and long may it continue, you know, like especially with the mega store that we've got over there now. And I hope that in the future it gets even bigger where we branch out into other markets like they're talking now about uh, trying to branch into the Mexican market. Uh, with obviously because him and has been a big signing for us and he's a big cultural um star for Mexico, um, the Mexicans love him, he's like a superhero to them. Number seven, which is for me, Nuno's relationship with the fans and the city. I've never seen in my lifetime anyway, a manager have that bigger impact on the city and on his fan base. Um, for me, he's made the fans fall back in love with the club, he's made the city fall back in love with the club. Um, you can see the influence he's had straight away when you look at the, the fact that the university honoured him as well. I've never seen that for a, a previous Wolves manager in my lifetime. So for me, Nuno is a big part of why we are as good as we are today. It doesn't matter if we're playing, I don't know, Telford United or Barcelona. This team's going to give 110% from the first whistle to the very last whistle. And again, that's down to Nuno. And yeah, he's just amazing in my eyes. And I hope that we keep him for a long time because... He is key to taking us to that level where we want to be. And uh, moving on to number six now, I want to talk about that wonder goal by Neves. And it goes, whips to the edge of the six yard box. It was just over the top of Bolly. Comes out to Neves, flicks it up. It's on the volley! Oh! Oh, 
Ruben Neves! Ruben Neves with one of the greatest goals you will ever, ever see! Um, Neves' goal against Derby for me is the goal of the decade. It's the goal of Wolves history, if you ask me. In my lifetime, I've never seen a goal like that for the, the, the guy to control a ball in that way and then connect with it so beautiful that it goes flying into the top corner, beating Scott Carson and sending Molly, you nuts. Um, that goal was incredible. That goal was incredible. He had pundits talking about it. Everybody was saying that he should win awards, but obviously because we were in the championship, nobody was ever going to look at that goal. Um, but they should do because that goal was amazing. Let's move on to number five. For me, number five is the signing of Matinho. Uh, Matinho, for me, is probably arguably the greatest signing that we've ever done. And the reason why I say that is because that guy dictates the way we play. He can pick a pass from out of nowhere. He, we thought Neves was awesome in the championship. Matinho is the older version of Neves. He's got more experience. He's got more class. And he's... Arguably, you could say when we bought him from Monaco for five million, they probably thought, "Oh, we're selling a player that is probably going to end his career there because you know we're done with him now. I don't think he's going to do much more." Yet the guy has showed that he's getting better and better with age, and that's why he signed a new contract now because he knows in himself that he can still play at the highest level. So for me, the Martinez is the greatest signing of the decade. Uh, moving to number four, I want to talk about that season where it all came together and we um, destroyed the championship basically to get back to the Premier League. Everybody was talking about us, saying that we were a Premier League team in championship and we were the Manchester City of the championship at the time. And we were the first team to go to the Etihad and stop Manchester City scoring in 90 minutes. And then we got one better and make it 120 minutes. And then we only lose because of penalties. And arguably you could say that we should have won that game if we put our chances away because the amount of one-on-ones we had in that game as well against Man City in the Cup. Um, but that team, that team for me was something special. I've been going to Molyneux and away games for a while now and I've never seen a team play like that. When you were watching a team play that kind of football, you knew that something special was happening and you knew that you could dream that this team could take you to levels that you, you never thought was possible. Um, but obviously, because we're Wolves fans, we're always going to have that little bit of doubt, saying like, oh, this is too good. Eventually, it's going to drop off. But it didn't. And that was the early stages. That was the foundations of the Nuno era. Number three for me was Kenny Jacket. Um, he came in at a time where we were at our lowest. Back-to-back um, -back relegations. We had, in my eyes, donkeys come in and take over our club. And they led us down a, a path where... We couldn't escape from and we ended up going into League One. Kenny Jacket came in, not many people wanted him, not many people had heard of him. But he came in, he got that um, team steady, he rebuilt that team into believing that we're too good to be in League One, let's get out of here. And we destroyed everybody in League One and we destroyed everybody in League One because we're Wolverhampton Wanderers and we shouldn't be in League One. And Kenny Jacket's the main part of that, he's the reason why we... I've managed to go onto this path now where we've become a really well established Premier League side because he's the one who kick started it. So, yeah, so Ken Jackie for me makes uh, number three. Number two is watching us in Europe. Um, for me, I could only ever dream of us playing in Europe. And a lot of people saying that we'll struggle. I didn't think we struggle. I think I've, my prediction was I thought we reached the group stages, the official group stages. But then I would be happy if we got knocked out then. Because to me, getting to that stage was an achievement in itself. Especially around about the time while we're trying to qualify for that group stage, we would be in the Premier League action. And obviously Nuno likes a small squad, so I thought we may struggle a little bit. But time and time again, this Wolves team proves you wrong in anything that you think might go wrong for us. They prove to you that, no, it's not going to go wrong. Give us time, give us a lot of support and we'll show you on that pitch that we're capable of doing anything and it makes you proud of this team and it makes you excited for what's coming up um because we've got espanol next in the europa league and i honestly think that we will win that so for me um i hope this european journey keep continues as far as it can continue my number one and this is definitely personal 
Um, I went to Bristol City away in that uh, championship winning season and that was probably the best away game I've ever been to in my entire life. Um, when Bennett scored that last minute winner. Nice angle on it. Whipped into the far post where it finds Bennett. I remember this big, big guy picking me up in the air. And I'm a big guy myself and I don't even know how he managed it. But he picked me up like it was a scene out of Dirty Dancing. And I just loved it because everybody's going nuts in the stand. And I remember my phone goes flying down the steps. And I didn't care. And then this random Wolves fan comes up to me and goes, I believe this is yours. And that was, that made it even more amazing that the fact that this Wolves fan saw that my phone had gone flying down the stairs and come and gave it me back. And what makes that day even better was you go to the coach and you go on your phone and you're looking on for Twitter and everything like that. And you see that celebration by Nuno after he got sent to the stands right in the Bristol end. And if you watch the full video of that, the security guard asks Jeff Shee to come and deal with Nuno. And Jeff Shee's got the biggest smile across his face. <laughs> Basically saying to Nuno, like, okay, yeah, 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 it's great. I know, it's lovely, it's awesome. But come on, come on, come on, Dave, we're in the Bristol end. <laughs> it was so funny and so awesome at the same time. And it showed you how much Jeff Shee loves this club. It showed you how much Nuno loves this club. And how much that win meant to us at that time. Because Bristol were fighting for one of those top spots as well that's my top 10 moments of the decade i've been scott wwfc for the walk back and i appreciate you for taking this time to listen to me all the best see you in the next one